Hello there and welcome back to another CPD talk. My name is Jasmine and I'm a senior in blood transfusion at Midway Maritime Hospital. So today we are going to be going through the Lutheran blood grouping system, also known as ISBT system number 005. So we're going to go through the basics of the LU blood grouping system, the LUA and LUB antigens and antibodies, other antigens and antibodies in the system, and then we're going to go through a quick summary. So the Lutheran blood grouping system is not one that you deal with in huge amounts routinely in blood transfusion, so this is going to be a shorter presentation, um, but we've still got some interesting things to go through. So, the basics of the Lutheran blood grouping system. Uh, as I said before, it's known as the Lutheran blood grouping system, or 005, and it has 20 known antigens within it. It was originally discovered in 1945 and should have been named Lutheran after the first LUA positive donor, but the writing on the blood sample was misread as Lutheran, um, which really is a nice little callback to how important it is to have blood transfusion samples written accurately and correctly and how easy it is to make mistakes with these and why we can be so strict with our samples. We ended up changing the whole name of a blood grouping system because of bad handwriting. So the group itself is coded for on the 19Q13.32 chromosome and results in the LU gene. LU is CD 239, also known as BCAM, basal cell adhesion molecule. The genes produce BCAM and Lutheran glycoprotein by alternative splicing of exon 13. The expression of BCAM is increased in certain malignant tumours and cells and may mediate the adhesion of sickle cells to vascular endothelium and contribute to painful episodes of vaso occlusion. So again, this is just one of those callbacks to remember that although when we're talking about blood grouping antigens um, in terms of blood transfusions, that they do generally have another purpose within the body. They're not just there to cause these incompatibilities when we transfuse people. Um, and it can be really interesting to learn about what they actually do separate from blood transfusion. So the fact that this is related to sickle cell, quite often when we're looking at blood transfusion, we're linked to hematology and your deal with sickle cell there. So it's quite a nice bit of information to know that they are linked. Um, so the most commonly occurring, well, tested for antigens within the this blood grouping system are LUA and LUB. Um, LUB is a high incidence antigen, so around 92.4% of the population have the phenotype LUA neg, LUB positive, whereas LUA is a low incident antigen with only 0.2% of most populations expressing the LUA pos but B negative phenotype. And when I'm giving you these statistics, please remember that obviously they are generic statistics and when you're moving from nationality to nationality they will fluctuate a little bit um, depending on the person's background and ethnicity um, but these are the generalized statistics so if we start with lua um, also known as lu1 it is antithetical to lub lu2 um, it's resistant to physin and papain treatment but sensitive to other enzyme treatments. Uh, so it's important to note what type of enzyme treatment you're using in your panels. Allo anti-LUA can be IgG or IgM and therefore can be detected by IAT or room temperature techniques respectively. But it's rare that it binds to complement. So it doesn't cause transfusion reactions um, and only rarely causes mild HDFN. Uh, so this is one of the reasons why anti-LUA uh, isn't really looked at as being that 
clinically significant within the laboratory and why you don't spend too much time on it. Uh, Sera containing anti-LUA often also contains HLA antibodies. So it's important to be aware of if you are using uh, an anti-Sera for LUA, that if you do get some positive results that you weren't expecting, it might be due to a HLA antibody reaction. Now, LUB um, is also resi resistant to fysin and papain, but sensitive to most other enzyme methods, and also reacts to IgG and IgM, so can be detected by IoT and room temperature techniques, respectively. However, unlike allo anti-LUA, anti-LUB can sometimes cause complement binding and therefore transfusion reactions can occur as a result of an incompatible transfusion. Um, these can range from being mild to moderate, uh, but HDFN as a result of anti-LUB is still mild normally. So if you remember, we mentioned earlier, if we go back, that LUB, the antigen, is a high incidence antigen. Therefore, the majority of the population are not going to be able to create allo anti-LUB. But obviously, if they do have it, then there is a chance that they can have a transfusion reaction if they are transfused with um, red cells that have the LUB antigen present on them. And because so many of the population have the LUB antigen, um, it can be hard to find blood for them. So if we have a quick look at the remaining antigens in, in this blood grouping system, so you can see uh, below I've included a table with the remaining antigens from these blood grouping systems. In the samples that have been tested that have these antigens, uh, most of them react in the same way as LUA and LUB, so in terms of the enzyme treatment. However, there's also uh, only a very small patient group for each of these. So it's, it is very difficult to conclusively determine whether they each cause a transfusion reaction slash HDFN or not. So that's pretty much it. Um, the Lutheran blood grouping system is often overlooked, as I previously mentioned. Anti-LUA is not normally clinically significant and anti-LUB is rare due to the incidence of its antigen. But it's still important to be aware of these antigens and antibodies in the cause of possible HDFN or transfusion reactions. Most techniques will pick up the presence of an allo antibody to the antigens. And as I said, in the case of the misnamed blood grouping system, it just highlights how important it is to ensure that groom and safe samples are labelled accurately and legibly. Um, hopefully this has been an interesting and a nice quick talk for everyone. Please remember to make this a robust piece of CPD you need to reflect on um, and if you do complete a reflection and hand it in to myself then I will give you a CPD certificate for it. Thank you all so much for listening and I look forward to the next one. Bye!